All right, I've got this uh, Murata uh, oscillator here, this nine, 915 megahertz oscillator. So I thought it'd be nice to put it in one of these boxes. Remember these, uh, these boxes I did? I had a whole series of me making things here. So um, I have a, these tops are hard to get off. So I've put a, I put a hole in here and that allows me to put something under the lid and then, and then lever it up. So that's, that's how I got the top off. All right. Okay, so now I have to get those boards out of there and I'm going to have to desolder them and one of the connectors I'm going to replace with a BNC. So I need to, I need to take off one of those. Oh God, there we go. All right, that uh, worked out all right. Let me uh, see if I can desolder that pin in there and uh, remove this uh, remove this piece. Let's go do that. All right, let's see if I can get this board loose from this side. Or is it not going to be cooperating? It's not cooperating. Hmm, interesting. Why is not it cooperating? Oh dear. Doesn't want to come off. Hmm. But that board would just uh, go down. Let's give it a little tappy tap. Watch Blondie Hacks. Tappy tap. Do it down here on the bench. There we go. Just break the solder loose. That's that's one way to do it. Get a little Neanderthal on it. All right, so let's get that out of there and we get a. Uh, oh, this almost comes out, but there's a little bit of solder on it. Oh dear, a little bit of solder on it. I need to get that solder off somehow. Hmm. How am I going to do that? Let's get through in here. Get the PC board off. All right. And I need to get that solder off of there. Hmm. That's not going to work. Hmm. Well, I'll just put a wrench on it. We'll get it out one way or the other. Got some uh, copper. Got copper here to. Is that coming out or just spinning? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Might just be spinning. Now that's coming out. There we go. I want to save these because sometimes I want to make a triple uh, triple output and I need an extra one. So I will save this. All right. And out comes the PC board. That's the filter. Low side on one side and high side on the other side. Okay. Now we need to open this up and put in a put in a BNC. Mm. 
All right, I don't know if you've ever tried to put a, uh, a B and C in a tapped hole, but this is the secret weapon. You need one of these. Uh, it is a 30, uh, 3 8 inch, 32 threads per inch. So it's a 3 8 32, a very, very, very unusual thread size. So it's the only thing I ever use this for is putting on BNCs. So very, very odd. Anyway, then it uh, goes on really good. And then hopefully we'll have room to uh, stick our part in there. It is kind of a, kind of a tight fit. So uh, we will have to do what we have to do. So I think maybe put it in first and then put the connector over it. Is it? Oh no, see the connector smashes into it. So yeah, this one's kind of fat. This one's fat. Uh, we might have to figure something else out. We might have to put it in, uh, we might have to put it in sideways. Oh, what fun. Anyway, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll work it out. Uh, I won't be able to screw this in all the way either. So it might have to, it might have to stick out a ways. Might have to put a, build a spacer for it. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. Oh dear. Oh dear. Um, uh, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'll work on this one. Okay, well, I punted. Uh, I went ahead and I got another box out and I put uh, the BNC at a right angle. And now my oscillator can sit at a right angle sideways. And now I'll have lots of room for the two connections. I won't have to come in from two different sides. I'll basically come in from the same side. So that should work out. Uh, that should work out a lot better. So I got to go look at my notes and figure out what the pin out of this thing is and, uh, and uh, yeah, get it wired up. Okay. I don't know if you can see it in there, but it's, uh, it's jammed in there. And uh, I have a, a capacitor. So it's a, a DC isolator from the outside because I think it's zero to five volts. So it's now it's DC isolated and uh, DC can come in here. And I can just uh, glue the uh, glue the top and bottom back on, which is easy enough to do. And I have a self-contained little unit, so uh, it just needs five volts. So I'll just put an adapter here so I can put clip leads on it. It's got a hole in the back. Maybe I'll plug that up with something. But uh, yeah, we'll take the output here. Uh, we'll connect uh, connect it up to a spectrum analyzer. Now I I didn't tie the um, adjustment pin anywhere. So uh, let me show you the schematic that I had originally. Um, so this is when I was doing the modulation of it. And pin 10 is the, uh, is the uh, frequency adjust. And what I had was I had pre-biased it with two and a half volts and that brought it up into the 900 uh, megahertz range. And then I was uh, tickling it with an oscillator to do the um, FM modulation on it. Um, so I'm gonna leave pin 10, pin 10 floating, floating, which will bring it down to the very bottom end of its oscillating uh, frequency. I could tie it up to five volts if I need to, but let's try it this way first. All right, so let's hook up uh, power on ground. There we go. And uh, yeah, let's see here. Oh, oh geez. Let's uh, put some, let's put some covers on it. Let's put it in here just to have it all, get it all buttoned up. Does that make sense? It's all, it's all buttoned up here. And let's go take a look at the output. So there we go. The uh, uh, main peak here is at 882 megahertz, so 882. So it's not up in the 900s down at, down at 882. But I think the important part of this particular kit is it's a square wave. So I get the second harmonic, which is really pretty healthy. So this one's at minus 10 dBm. Let's do a peak search right. That one's at uh, minus 26 dBm. So it's still pretty healthy and usable. So that, I think, will be the most useful frequency right there, the uh, 1.76. What that will allow me to do is to down convert things 
into the range of the spectrum analyzer. So if I have something here and I, and I mix it with anything, it'll be lower than this and I'll have the whole range to work with. So I think that's a perfect frequency to have in a, in a little box. It probably has a third harmonic that's even bigger than that one too. Um, but my spectrum analyzer can't measure that. So <laughs> it's over there somewhere. I suppose I could use it. I mean, I know it's there, so I'm supposed I could use it to mix things down. So I'll have to remember that, that this is a square wave output. Anyway, uh, I'll just need to, like I said, uh, put the top and bottoms on and uh, put a label on it and add it to my collection. So yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. It's got uh, right angles on it, but that's fine. And uh, yeah, quite usable. All right, there we go. Uh, 882.7 megahertz and 1.76 gigahertz, uh, minus 9 dBm and minus 26 dBm. So uh, project complete.